All right, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna talk about the don'ts in 2020. The do's and don'ts are fun videos to do as we approach year's end, and this is gonna be the flip side uh, to, the, to the do's that you wanna to try to focus on. This is gonna be the don'ts. This is gonna be a little bit more a little bit more negative. I, I think uh, a lot of people need to hear this. I, I really do. I think a lot of people need to drop their own personal barriers when it comes to not only wealth building, but uh, just building a better life for themselves. Number one is stop being so naive, okay? I call it conveniently naive for a lot of people who use just, I don't know, as an excuse as to why they can't do certain things. Seek the information out, okay? Being naive doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that at all. It's something that's really, really um, frustrating for me when I talk to people who want to know more about personal finance. They wanna know more about how they can improve their own personal health, uh, well-being, but they don't wanna do the first freaking thing toward that end, and I just think they've been stuck in a rut for so long that they're naive to the potential about where they could be. Um, and uh, I, I, I think that's probably one of the worst things that can happen to somebody is that they just, they, they have information available to them, but they wanna remain conveniently naive to the information for whatever reason, okay? There may be uh, some historical, um, you know, um, influences there that, uh, that wanna just keep them away from the, the topic of building personal finance and wealth. Uh, and and that's, that's unfortunate. That's definitely something that you want to try to avoid. And if we're coming into a new year, don't be naive about your own capability. It's super important to start to blow down some of these barriers that you may have had. And, and instead of thinking that you can't do it, um, start to wonder about the prospects of absolutely doing it. All right. The next is coming up with every excuse in the book as to why you can't sit back for two seconds and just listen to a message. Stop coming up with the fact that your neighbor did something and they lost a ton of money or everybody in 2009 lost everything that they can and therefore it's gonna somehow happen to you as well. I will say this, the reality when the rubber meets the road in investing is each and every opportunity and deficiency that are gonna come in the stock market are gonna be individual in nature. All right, the opportunity that you're going to carve out for yourself is because you're going to be able to not make those excuses. You're going to turn those excuses into reasons why you can absolutely do it. And so many people inundate themselves with these excuses as to why they're not smart enough, why they're not, they don't have the ample information, why, why this, that, and, and everything as to why they can't get involved in a program and it's, it's hard to get through to those people because they have an excuse for everything. Why can't they self-direct on their own? Well, it's crazy. Why can't you get information through YouTube? Well, it's crazy. Why? Because you've been taught that your whole life. I really think you need to maybe get over what it is that you think you know about personal finances and, and start to entertain the prospects that maybe you don't know as much as you think you do. Everybody's in that camp, guys. There's no nobody out there that has all the answers. And the quicker you can stop making excuses for why you're not where you want to be, the better off you'll be entering into 2020. Next to stop blaming others, okay? You're gonna, there's so many people that will come on and they'll relish in the fact that I'm an investor. Nobody will come on, very few will come on and, and, and enjoy some of the successes that me and some of the other uh, investors are gonna have when the market is good. But when the market turns negative, it's amazing how many people will come on and, and start blaming everybody else as to why they are not invested in the market or saying, see, I told you so, I'm not invested, so therefore, it, it, it's somehow okay for me to come on and say, you know, because you're failing at it, uh, it, it's all your fault. Or, you know, I invested six months ago and I'm down 7%. It's, it's, it's all your fault. You need to stop doing that, okay? Understand that the mirror exists for a reason and I, I'd encourage each and every one of you guys to stand in front of it for as long as you possibly need to understand that the person who's on the other end of that uh, looking back at you is probably the only person that deserves to be blamed for your deficiencies. And 
I do it all the time. I, I self-reflect. I really try to self-assess. I constructively offer uh, criticisms over my own program. I try to be as constructively critical of people when they ask me to evaluate um, what it is they can do to maybe potentially improve upon their fitness uh, in their budgeting, things like that. But, but the last thing that you want to do is start blaming everybody else for, for why you're not where you need to be. Certainly, there are probably some reasons why, some legitimate reasons, but honestly, how you deal with those injects, how you deal with those shortcomings, how you deal with those setbacks is going to define you from others. And the last thing that you want to do is just start blaming everybody else for those setbacks because they're going to compound and they're going to be an insurmountable problem for you to overcome in 2020. Stop blaming others, all right? Stop creating barriers for yourself, okay? The barriers that you create for yourself transcend. They don't, it doesn't matter if you're poor or rich. There's people that come across the channel and they're a disaster and they have all kinds of money. The other side of the coin is I have people who come onto the community who are hungry. They want this program and they're willing to blow through barriers to make it happen for themselves, okay? So success is not, it, it's not bestowed upon the rich automatically. And it's not one of those things that just because you're poor, you can't pursue wealth. None of that matters in my mind, none of it. it it's the degree of separation that you're able to realize for yourself if you don't come from money and you are predispositioned to a life of mediocrity because you don't just have wealth bestowed upon you, you're going to have to work a little bit harder. But it's amazing to me and it's encouraging how many people are willing to blow through barriers when they're hungry. And I find that a lot of people who don't have that type of discipline spend a lot of their times creating a comfort barrier uh, in their castle. And they basically sit behind their walls all the time uh, in this arena of comfort. Those people stand the highest chance of reflecting back on their life and actually regretting not breaking through some of those personal barriers that they've created for themselves. The next thing I want to bring to you guys' attention is those folks that act upon everything. You need to be a little bit more critical of the information that not only you consume, I'm not telling you not to listen to certain things or others, but man alive, put on a filter. When you're receiving information, it doesn't mean that you have to act on everything. Take the, take the nuggets. Take the themes that people are trying to put forward. For example, I own Amazon stock in my portfolio. It doesn't mean that every one of my subscribers has to go out there and kill themselves to own Amazon stock. It fits for me. It doesn't fit for most. But from a holistic perspective, stop acting on everything that people say and, and be critical of the, of the information that you're vetting. I would contend that the majority of information that you're consuming, you could probably act on a very, very small percentage and, and, and probably be all right, okay? You don't have to act upon everything. You don't have to buy every course out there that every YouTube creator is, 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 is pushing out there. I would contend that a lot of the information that is pushed out is available free of charge. So stop acting on everything. People who are pushing out information, even as aggressive as they may seem or as sure as they may be, have probably already rendered the success that's gonna be rendered on a particular topic. And it's very, very difficult to duplicate those successes over and over for people. So they're basically capturing that success that they've had and selling the dream to people. Stop acting on all those things, okay? Start to manufacture some wealth on your own. You'll be so much better than you did. And it, it's so much more fulfilling when you pursue that level uh, of, uh, of, of wealth building in your life, all right? Stop dwelling on the past, okay? I, I don't, I can't control the fact that we've been in a bull market for the last 10 plus years. I can't control that. I don't know if because we've been in a bull market that automatically we're gonna have a recession next year. I can't forgive bad stock trades that you've made. I can't change bad strategies that you've deployed. I can't change bad advice that you've acted upon to somehow 
make your decisions more relevant for the future. It doesn't work that way. Free will is always, always in play, and the decisions that you make today will, in fact, impact your future. So imagine you're in the future, and you're looking back at the decisions that you've made, and you don't have the opportunity to dwell on them. You have a, a chance to recollect those decisions as being life-changing, but stop using every negative thing that you've ever went through in your life uh, to dwell on them and make your decisions for the future. It's no way to live and it's no way to enter into 2020 if you want to succeed uh, on a wealth building strategy that's going to work for you, okay? Uh, the, the next thing is you definitely don't want to lose focus, okay? Don't let this thing get dull. Don't let your program or your guard down, okay? Because that's going to be the time where you're the most vulnerable and the most susceptible when the volatility kicks up and you're not prepared for it because you've lost focus uh, on your program and it uh, increases your degree of making mistakes. It increases your degree of acting instinctually in the moment uh, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to be laser focused the whole time, but if you do lose focus, you are going to be more susceptible to acting on impulse and acting on impulse for short-term validation at the expense of long-term satisfaction is absolutely something that we want to avoid. So don't lose focus. The next thing going into 2020 is not to overspend. I could talk for hours on this topic. If you drink too much, if you smoke too much, if you don't exercise too much, if you eat out at restaurants too often, if you are a shopaholic, if you go out and you spend your money on your car payment, get it paid off only to go and trade it back in on a new car, stop doing that. If there's one area of your life that you can look to cut back on a little bit, buy a nice car that's gonna last a long time and get that up into a, a, an area where it's paying you back over time, okay? But stop overspending, all right? There's, you're gonna, it, you'd be so amazed at how little satisfaction you actually get in buying everything that you see. Just learn to say no every now and then, okay? You don't have to go to a restaurant three times a week. You don't. You can cut back. You can go buy groceries. It will save you a truckload in the budget but don't overspend. And you could look to improve every single budget category that you have moving into 20 to make sure that you're abiding by the don't overspend rule, all right? The next one is stop being stubborn, okay? There's so many people who, in, in my opinion, can't get out of their own way to, to become successful in, in the stock market. I meet this, um, unfortunate attribute in a lot of people who are from academia, for example, a lot of very smart degree holders out there who have academia coming out their ears, but they have very, very little common sense when it comes to evaluating a program and saying very nicely, no, it's not for me, or wow, there's some very valid points there. Um, in, in either case, most of those folks that I find have this attribute of being so stubborn that they can't get out of their own way, it really, really does hamper their ability to seek out wealth building strategies that may be in uh, direct conflict with the status quo. It really does. And I feel very bad for those folks because I see the potential that they could render uh, if they would just drop their ego for two seconds and stop being so stubborn. So sit back for a second and listen, okay? Learn to not only listen, but also offer constructive criticism. It will help you in the long run. Just stop being so stubborn because you're probably your own worst enemy when it comes to seeking wealth uh, that, um, th that, that, that will actually be worth it in the future, okay? Um, the next one is to stop being so content and don't get stagnant in your program. If you're looking at wherever you are in life, I, young people fall victim to this all the time. They've got a wonderful job, they've got a wonderful car, they've got an overpriced apartment, and they are content. Stay hungry, okay? 
The don'ts in 2020, this is really, really going to hinder your ability to get ahead because if you don't think for a second that there's not a piranha tank out there going on and people who are you, your age aren't competing to get ahead, they are. The second that you become content, you've basically given that right of way to those folks to blow right past you in the game of life, okay? So don't be content. Always remain hungry in your program and you'll be so glad that you did, okay? You wanna make sure that you're avoiding reaction from everything, okay? You don't have to react on every inject that you get. You need to learn to take things in stride. So I would say that a don't for 2020 is to overreact to things, okay? You don't have to react on every little thing, okay? Maybe you miss a payment. Maybe you're late on a payment. Maybe you didn't get the bonus that you expected. Maybe this, maybe that. Maybe life is doing its job, okay? You cannot be surprised when injects come into your life and, and, and they're not all good, okay? They're not. Some of them are bad. And your ability to be steadfast in your program and not react negatively to all those injects that may come will help you immensely. Things you want to avoid in 2020, okay? You don't want to ignore instinct, okay? You're all given an internal, internal instinct, okay? Use it. It will work. And the more you use your instinct and sit back for a second and say, does this sound right? Just doesn't sit well with me. I've got this feeling in my stomach. It just doesn't seem legit, okay? Don't ignore your instinct. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about giving in to every little thing for the hope of making something out of that inject when your instinct may be telling you there's no way at all that that is ever going to turn into anything tangible in your life, okay? When you start to rely on everybody else opposed to your, instead of yourself, that's when you run the risk of really straying off path in your program, okay? The next is to, um, you never want to underestimate yourself. And I find this all the time in people. They underestimate their own ability. People have the ability, and it, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter where your socioeconomic uh, opportunity lies. It doesn't matter about your ethnicity. It doesn't matter about your gender. None of it matters. None of it. If you start to buy into some of those things to where you start to say I'm underprivileged or overprivileged or whatever, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is that you never ever underestimate your potential, okay? Never underestimate the opportunity that you have. And if you put those two things together with today's opportunity, the sky's limit. Never ever underestimate your potential, never, okay? Especially moving into 2020. You never want to complicate something. I find this all the time as well. People make investing to be more complicated than it seems to be. Now, me personally, it's difficult sometimes when I overspeak the topic uh, because I've been doing it for such a long time, but it hasn't been a result of not making mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes, and the ability to condense my message into a nice little package that makes it super, super simple for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience in the market to still sit across from the message that we're putting through and say, it's too complicated, I don't touch it. That, that's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make instead of really entertaining the prospects of how easy this can be. But if you end up overcomplicating it, it's gonna, it's gonna create one of those barriers that I'm talking about to entry um, and it's really gonna prohibit your ability to get involved and become a participant, all right? You wanna avoid distraction. Don't get distracted uh, from all the injects that you can get. I find this all the time and it's specifically rampant upon young investors, okay? I, I think Robinhood is a distraction, I really do. I believe that it's distracted 10 million people. People will argue with me. No, Ryan, it's brought 10 million to investing. BS. They are absolutely aiming their message at new investors who don't know the 
uh, benefits of a retirement account. They're getting people in under the allure of free trading. And the allure of free trading, anything less than 365 days, is subjecting new investors to short-term capital gains. And that right there is distracting people from what they need to be focused on. Okay, that's just one of many, many examples because they put the teaser out there so tempting and people want to jump on it and they want to believe that they're part of something special. They really do. What it ends up doing is it ends up distracting them and they end up foregoing some of that time that they could be using for their own personal gain uh, while they're on this tangent of distraction. Okay. You want to avoid those at all cost, okay? You don't want to spend your life on a winding road. You want to try to pick the straightest road that you can. Um, you'll save a ton of time and you'll save a lot of heartache, actually, backtracking and trying to get on that straight line again, all right? Um, stop being so critical of others, okay? When you're going to criticize somebody, make sure and put the constructive word in front of criticize, okay? Because here's the thing, who, who are you, okay? Who am I? Who am I to criticize and who are you to criticize, okay? While you're spending your time being so critical of others, perhaps maybe you could point the finger back at yourself, okay? Maybe it was how you received the information that was problematic. Perhaps maybe you didn't understand the full extent of the message that was being put through. So before you jump on the criticize bandwagon, Ask yourself, do you always react and, and criticize right away? Or do you take a little bit of time in deliberation to try to understand what was being put through before I devoted so much time on a tangent of criticization? I, I think you guys are being critical. I, I think you guys would be so much more happy if the number one person in your life that you were the most critical of was yourself. Okay? It's something that I abide by myself. I am my number one critic. I really am. There's nobody on this earth that's more critical uh, on me than me. And I suggest you do the same going into 2020. Stop judging others, okay? You're not in a place to judge. You're just another human being trying to make it. Some people are going to make mistakes. Other people are going to have successes. It's not your place to judge one or the other to say, ah, oh, you're a failure or you're a success. Maybe not so much. You don't know what's going on on the inside um, when you're putting yourself in a position to judge others, okay? I really think that we do that way too much as a society. I, I think we judge from a distance. Oh, this person has a huge portfolio. Therefore, they're automatically a phenomenal investor. That's not how it works in my book. I have a lot more, uh, a lot more criticism over somebody's program critical, right? Before I start to deem them and judge them and say that they automatically need to be put on a pedestal. And then on the flip side of it, if somebody's coming from a perspective where they don't have a whole lot of money, they don't have a lot of opportunity, who am I to judge? How about we start to provide a little bit more opportunity uh, for people on both sides of the coin? I never ever try to perceive that I know where somebody's coming from because the fact of the matter is I don't know. I don't. And people need to say that more often, okay? Need to not be complacent going into 2020. I think this market is lulling a lot of people to sleep. I think a lot of people are going to get burned because I think a lot of people are going to be surprised and they're going to knee-jerk reaction on this market. And it's going to be sad to watch because people have been lulled to sleep thinking that this market is just going to continue up at 30% a year. And that's not going to happen. That's definitely a don't for 2020, okay? The next thing is don't deceive, okay? If you're going to do a side hustle or you're going to do something in life or you're going to help somebody out or if you're looking to uh, write a piece of business for somebody, you definitely don't want to deceive them or misconstrue the message in a manner that they hear what they want to hear because of what you've wanted them to hear, okay? Try to be as truthful as you possibly can. And when you don't know something, say, I don't know. And, and, and that's going to avoid a lot of deception for a lot of people. And that, that's one thing that really bothers me is when people go into a project with deceit as one of those primary objectives 
to making whatever that they're going to make no matter what at the cost of others uh, I, that that's really really poor behavior and I think it I don't really think it has any place for anybody in 2020 the last thing I will say is we're moving into 2020 probably the most important thing that's why I put it last on the list is don't ever ever lose perspective ever going into 2020 we're coming off a year in the S&P 500 that's up about 28 percent for this year don't ever lose perspective on the fact that investing is a luxury it's not a right it's not it's something that I contend that everybody should participate in in some degree or another but don't ever lose perspective on the fact that there's people around this world who cannot clothe themselves don't ever lose perspective on the fact that there's people actually not only abroad but in this country that cannot feed themselves okay so if you start to lose perspective in 2020 try to take a moment to gain that perspective back because in reality it's probably not as bad as you think that it is the flip side of it is it's probably not as good as you think it is either because you've had a lapse in your perspective going into 2020 do yourself a favor don't lose your perspective all right guys if you enjoy the message that we're putting through on the channel hit the subscribe button leave your comments at the bottom if you think i've missed something on the don't side of the house going into 2020 things that you want to avoid things that you don't want to do leave them in the comments section i'll, I'll enjoy reading through those uh, if you think i've missed something you want to share the message bring more people on to the community that we're looking to build empower and draw awareness to the ability that people have it's never been a more exciting time to become an investor than right now and especially it's going to be more and more apparent moving into 2020 more people need to hear this message guys help me share the message with those folks as thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investing future